I want you to find 10 to 15 minutes. That's it. That's all it takes. 10 to 15 minutes. I want to teach you how you use some simple things to push through the excuses that are always going to be there and the fear that's always going to be there so that you can do what you need to do every day in order to inch yourself closer to whatever that big goal is. How you start your morning determines how your day goes. That's right. How your morning starts determines how your day goes. There's so much research about productivity and happiness, and so many of you are focused on what do I need to do? What do I need to do? How do I get more stuff done? And you get busier and busier and busier. And I want you to understand something. Being productive, being happy, being in control of your life, it has nothing to do with when you get up. It has everything to do with how you get up. And so a routine refresh is something that you have to do. You have to do it because you must have a morning routine. If you don't have a morning routine, your entire day will get hijacked. If you don't have a morning routine, you're gonna wake up behind, you're gonna wake up stressed out, you're gonna wake up and make a major mistake, which is you're going to let the world come into your brain and set your priorities before you even put yourself first. And so a routine refresh is critical. Refresh your routine. Why is this important? Because there is so much science that talks about the power of your morning routine. And there's also so much noise out there about the morning routine. But all of the articles out there tend to be written by guys that have two and a half hours before work starts to somehow drink mushroom tea and meditate and go to yoga and exercise and drink bulletproof coffee and sit in an infrared sauna. And I don't know what planet these people live on, but they clearly don't have children or a job they need to get to at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm being realistic. I'm being realistic about the fact that you need a morning routine, but you need one that works for you. You see, I had a morning routine that used to take me 30 to 40 minutes last year when I had more time. I've had a morning routine that took an hour when I had time and the ability to go for a jog in the morning. I'd incorporate that in the morning routine. My morning routine, 10 minutes long. That's it. It's 10 minutes long because that's what works for me in this season of my life. And so I am inviting you to do a routine refresh where I'm gonna walk you through the science of a morning routine. I'm going to take you step by step in this guide through how you should be thinking about the components of what you wanna do every morning in your morning routine. And I am also begging you to customize it so that it works for you. Because the truth is, if it doesn't work for where you are in your life right now, you're not gonna do it. And the most effective morning routine is the one that you actually do every morning. I've got a question. <clears throat> from Diego and this is going to relate back to your morning routine from Diego I have a dream of opening my own restaurant, but I'm terrified to start How many of you have ever thought about opening up a restaurant or starting a small business or Having some kind of side hustle it doesn't have to be a restaurant the American dream used to be I really dream of owning my own home do you know what the American dream is now for the majority of people? It's, I wanna own my own business. And so whether you're interested in launching a restaurant or you would love to have a business of any size, shape, or form in any vertical that you can think of, this is a question that you need to pay attention to, okay? Because I know this is also impacting you. I'm terrified to start. I know I have the potential to be really successful, but I just can't get myself to actually do something about it. You know, sometimes when the dream is so big, the fact that it's so big becomes paralyzing because you think about where you are right now and you think, holy cow, that thing that I really want, I don't even, like, how do you even start when the dream is so big? So here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna shrink it down. I don't want you to think about opening a restaurant. I don't want you to think about launching that business because that's something that will happen a year from now. What I want you to think about is I want you to shrink your thinking. I want you to think about researching a restaurant. I want you to think about preparing to launch a restaurant. 
I want you to think about learning about launching a restaurant. Do you see how just saying, I want to learn about launching a restaurant changes how you feel versus I'm launching a restaurant, which feels so big. You're just in a phase where you're learning and researching this idea, which all of a sudden takes all the pressure off, doesn't it? So that's number one. Let's shrink it. Let's not talk about launching it. Let's not talk about building it. Let's talk about researching and learning about it. Okay. So that takes the pressure off. Then the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to focus on something that I talk about all the time. If you're researching and learning about launching a restaurant or a business, all I want you to do, I want you to find 10 to 15 minutes. That's it. That's all it takes. 10 to 15 minutes. And I want you to do one thing for 10 or 15 minutes a day that helps you learn or research about the idea of launching a restaurant. How many of you are starting to feel a little bit lighter? How many of you are starting to feel like, holy cow, thinking about it that way, I actually could get started today. Making this smaller and making it something that I'm learning about rather than doing and launching and mm -hmm, that somehow thinking about it differently frees up the ability to get started. I want you to do one small thing a day. So what could you do? You could read an article about somebody that launched a first time restaurant. You could look online for 10 to 15 minutes for a local restaurant networking event. You're not launching or building a restaurant yet. You're learning about it and you're researching it. And your job as a student of this subject is to do something every day for 10 or 15 minutes in order to learn or research it. That's it. That's all I want you to do because here's what I know. If I get you to start doing that and you do this every day for 10 or 15 minutes, which you absolutely can, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna feel momentum. You're gonna feel like you're working on it. You're gonna meet people that are interested in it. You're gonna learn things that are gonna lead to the next thing that you need to learn. And you will have mastered the art of getting started. And by doing something a little bit every day, you're also gonna master the art of continuing to keep going. And from there, it'll snowball. I promise you, I promise you. As you meet people, the next thing you'll do would be to learn more from them. As you read and watch tutorials about people that have started restaurants, as you watch television programming about it, you're gonna feel more inspired. You're gonna start to see, I think I can do this. That's gonna lead to the next thing. Trust me when I say, it's all about the little progress you make every day. I want you to stop talking about launching it and building it and I want you to shrink it back to I'm learning about it and researching it. That's number one. Number two, 10 to 15 minutes a day you are a student of this subject. That's it. Get yourself a notebook where you keep all your notes. Get yourself organized like you would as a student and find one thing you can do every single day that teaches you a little bit something about this subject that you're really interested in. And trust me, it'll all happen just by doing that. There will always be an excuse not to do the things you need to do, particularly the things that scare you, that you have to dream, you have to visualize. And we're gonna talk about the science of visualization. It's easy to dream. It's really hard to do. And I want to teach you how you use some simple things to push through the excuses that are always going to be there and the fear that's always going to be there so that you can do what you need to do every day in order to inch yourself closer to whatever that big goal is. But what I want you to do is I want you to use a science-backed tool called visualization to your advantage. There's hard science around visualization but I've noticed that most people only explain 50% of what you're supposed to do, but it's critical that you understand the two-step process of what you're going to do in terms of visualization. And that's this piece of visualization that everybody misses, that the science says is the most important. You can't just write down your goals. It won't work. You can't just put up a board with photos on it. It won't work. You have to do the second part, which is you have to imagine yourself taking the steps to get there, not the end goal. This is powerful research out of UCLA. 
This is what will make visualization work. Not just the pretty end game, but visualize the steps that you're taking to get there. And then here's the kicker. Are you ready for the most important research? You've got to allow yourself to feel the emotions associated with it. You've got to make your visual board. It's a really powerful thing to do for sure. But then I want you to visualize yourself every day doing the steps leading up to it. This is research from UCLA. And I want you to allow yourself to feel the emotions, feel the emotions that you will feel as you're doing those things. Feel pride, feel excited, 